The Autodroma Nazionale di Monza, Italy's Cathedral of Speed. It is Sunday, it is time to come and worship. World Touring Car Championship is on the menu for today. Hello everybody, benvenuti all'Autodroma Nazionale di Monza. Welcome to the second race weekend of the FIA World Touring Car Championship. I'm Martin Haven, alongside me, multiple British Touring Car Champion Matt Neal. And a chance to see the cars in this beautiful sunny morning lining up here on the grid. In fact, it has just clicked over into afternoon, midday Central European time. Cars are arriving at the starting lineup. While the Volvos that were dominant in terms of speed in qualifying will start at the front of our main race. But for the first of the two encounters, the opening race, the top 10 after qualifying are reversed. And on the DHL pole is Tom Coronel. There is the Dutchman and uh, his partner Pauline Swart supporting Billy Wiz. And Tom starting from pole position. Now we caught up with Mehdi Banani, who will start alongside him on the front row of the grid a little while ago. Let's hear from the Moroccan. Mehdi Banani, you are P2, front row of the grid, so you've extended your valuable points, much needed, and uh, today could be a very very good opportunity to extend them some more. Yeah, for sure, for sure. This uh, year we start, uh, we start really well with the first podium in Marrakesh. For sure here it's, uh, it's, a good, it's good to start from the first row. I think I will uh, be waiting from all opportunity I will get to take it and uh, to see what uh, can happen for sure to start with the front row it's a good from Citroen we know that our start uh, are not so bad so maybe we can uh, we can fight uh, to be on the on the first position from uh, from the start i hope so <laughs> well Medi certainly has a quick car in the Citroen C Elise, the car that's won the championship for the last three years of course and Behind them, the first of the factory Hondas is driven by Hungary's Norbert Michelitz. He lines up in fifth position. Honda surprisingly quick in qualifying on their own and as a group in straight line speed. They didn't think they were going to have a very strong weekend here. I wonder if perhaps they're going to have to recalibrate that thought for the race. And the three factory Honda drivers, Rio Michigami, Chaga Montero and Norbert Michelitz, had uh, slightly differing fortunes in qualifying. You can see the Hungarian colours there. And there is Esteban Guerreri. Guerreri will start in third place on the grid. And a row behind him, Norbert Michelitz. Alex caught up with him a little earlier. Norby, you are P5, so you are in a tricky position for this opening race. However, we know that Slipstream does come into play here in Monza, and we know that Honda have great speed. Yeah, but we were very satisfied after qualifying, looking at the speed trap uh, data. And also I have to tell you that uh, after the start, you have a long acceleration until the first corner. So with a good start, I think it's possible to gain some position. Of course, starting from P5, that's my main target. And then in the races, you just have to yeah, somehow manage the slip streaming with the cars coming from behind. But yeah, looking at the speed, it should be possible for us to get a good result. Thank you. The Hondas will certainly have to work together hard uh, to overcome the Citroëns and the Volvos. The Citroëns, of course, not a factory team this year. They're being run by Sebastian Loeb Racing and by Munich Motorsport. So a little less cohesive, perhaps, than they might have been in the past. But Volvo will certainly be working together to try and get maximum points out of the opening race as well as out of the main race. Here's a look at our grid. Tom Coronel, the DHL pole sitter, ahead of Mehdi Banani. Chevrolet on row two as well. That's Argentina's Esteban Guerrieri. Didn't have much pace in qualifying. Tom Chilton starts alongside him. So 
The best of the Hondas on this grid, Norba Mikulic with Nesta Girolami's Volvo, Nikki Katzberg's Volvo and Rob Huff's Sijun, which got into the top five in Q3. Thiago Montero and Ted Bjork round out the top ten, ahead of Rio Michigami and Jan Elache, who start 11th and 12th for both races. John Philippi and Aurelien Panis, an all-French row seven for both races. Newcomer Kevin Gleason from the USA starts 15th. And Daniel Nadge will start in 16th position. And those spots outside the top 10 are fixed for both races. Well, here's the onboard shot of Tom Coronel. And for those of you that haven't followed uh, the story, Billy Wiz refers to the nickname of young 17-year-old single-seater driver Billy Munger, who was uh, seriously injured in a crash in Donington last Sunday and uh, lost both of his legs. Uh, there's a just giving site to raise money for his rehabilitation. The very next day, uh, a club racer called Craig Walker was also very seriously injured in an event at Castle Coombe in Wiltshire, and a Just Giving page has been started for him. Both are very, very worthy courses. Please, if you give a, a moment or two, go and look those up. And as we look there at Daniel Nadge at the tail of the field and Kevin Gleason here, uh, today is also the 23rd anniversary of the death of Roland Ratzenberger, who, as well as being a Formula One driver, was also a touring car driver in his time, raced in British touring cars, among others. And, of course, tomorrow, 1st of May, it will be 23 years since Ayrton Senna lost his life, too, in that horrible, horrible weekend in Imola. So we send our best thoughts to Billy Munger, Craig Walker, and their families, friends, and loved ones, and our thoughts with the loved ones of Roland Ratt and also Ayrton Senna. So hopefully uh, entertaining racing in prospect here. Matt Neal, we've had two touring car races already this morning from the European Touring Car Cup and classic slipstreaming action in both of them. We will hope for much more of that here. Coming to Monza, Martin, it's one of the old school romantic European circuits, <clears throat> all the designer circuits built today, they, they just need to take a, a look at the leaf out of this book because um, this promotes great nostalgia but also great racing. The slipstreaming, you know, the likes of Monza Spa with the long straights, big braking zones. We, you know, it's, it's been super, super close in, uh, for the length of the circuit in qualifying and it, it looks the most open race we've had in uh, WTC for a few years now. Yeah, it certainly does, and uh, different car shapes work better on different circuits than others. Honda with the hatchback expecting to be a little bit outpaced here by the saloon shapes of the Volvo. Actually, even of the Lada almost, because it's that's kind of a saloon shape as well, and of the Citroëns. But hasn't been quite as big a gap uh, as they feared, so it looks like we might have a... Bit of a, a knockdown drag out fight. Jan Elache, really unfortunate, quick in Marrakesh. Unfortunate, his car got damaged when John Philippi stalled right in front of him. And of course, on that grid, nowhere to go. Here, there is room to sort of swerve around people. They'll be hoping for a, a much better race weekend. Starts both races in 12th. Qualified well, very confident young man. Had a good race weekend in the European Le Mans series at Silverstone last week. And, of course, in Marrakesh a couple of weeks before that. Rio Michigami just outside the top ten, just missed out on that reverse front row start that you get after being 10th in qualifying. So he's consigned to 11th in both races. And the Hondas are sort of spread across the grid, aren't they? Whereas you, you've got the Volvos more in a clump. You've got the two of them together here. Uh, or uh, Ted Bjork on his own, but... Nikki Katzberg and Nesta Girolami together, and, and that immediately gives you a chance to work with your teammates. Yeah, naturally, looking at the Volvos, you think it's going to be a more slippy, it's a longer, lower car than the, than the, the Type R's. But um, I, Honda have been playing themselves down. But I like, you know, they've got, they've got an aero upgrade, they've had a big engine upgrade this year, and which has been super strong. It was super strong in Marrakesh, and, uh, you know, they, they're my tip for the title, really, at the minute. You know, Montero, we're seeing Thiago, he's... Uh, He's really coming to his own in front-wheel drive touring cars now. He's a force to be reckoned with, and he's, he's leading the team from the front. Yeah. He's strong, and the, the speed he's shown in qualifying, OK, he's not right there at the sharp end with the Volvo, but 
it, his VMAX was faster yeah. than anybody at points. So in the slipstreaming in the race, they could actually spring a few surprises. And he was outright second fastest in the uh, in Q3 in the top five shootout. Rob Huff went third fastest. And there was a, a question about whose laps were quite using all the track and who's used a bit more. But in the end, that was a little bit of a moot point. Rob Huff will start this race in eighth. Disappointing start to the season, really, for Huffy. He came in full of hope and expectation to Marrakesh, a track that he knows well. He's a very good street racer. And, of course, the Citroen the car to have in the last three seasons. Very excited with that. It just didn't happen for him. So he's got a point or two to prove here. And this is a track where he's won before. Rob Huff, last current racer on this grid to win in Monty. And lap had, record holder, Martin. Yeah, he had and double race holder. wins. Yeah, back in the Chevrolet days, if Art Muller won the last four World Touring Car races here, in fact, in succession, two uh, double win years, the last two times we came here. But ahead of Huff, Nicky Katzberg and Nesta Girolami. So it's an all-blue Cyan Polestar Volvo row in front of him. And these two really have to work it cleverly to get into the first corner without either running into each other or losing ground to their rivals and that's that's always tricky Matt you know you're funneled down into this tiny little bottleneck and the one car you've got to avoid is the one that's the same as yours yeah it's a big braking zone as well the first first one and the brakes are going to be cold you know they're going to be in very close proximity and it is super tight around that first chicane so it's uh, it's always a flashpoint you know the European touring cars managed to do it unscathed in two races earlier on this morning so um these boys have got to uh right. follow their metal difference the european touring cars had is that they were a little less quick down into the first corner from a standing start of course so the faster you go down into there uh the smaller the gaps are and the quicker the doors close in front of you Tom Chilton sitting in his Sebastian Loeb Racing Citroen. Second row of the grid for the opening race here in the Autodroma Nazionale di Monza. And above the bonnet of Esteban Guerreri, you can see the huge grandstands around this historic start-finish straight. And for guys like Guerreri returning here to Monza, a welcome return. He's raced here in a variety of different machinery, but there are guys on the grid. Jan Lache, for instance, in the RC Motorsport Lada never been to Monza in his life and for a young driver Matt you know Monza, Spa, Monaco those are names that you hear bandied around all the time coming here for the first time you must remember you know, it wasn't you know a, a couple of years ago but you were a young driver coming to Monza for the first time you know what what does that kind of bring is it intimidating is it inspiring uh, for young El El Lache, I think he's just got he's got a superly level-headed uh, head on his shoulders you know he seems to take everything in stride not get phased not get too nervous and um he's just a cool customer i like him he's he's coming across really well yeah you know the rc motorsport they are in a bit of a back foot you know budgets are restrictions so they're they're here they're on the grid he's doing the full season which is fantastic to get his head around the car um but it, you know he, he's just got to take one thing at a time learn it and you know take everything as it comes Tom Coronel, the DHL pole sitter in the Roal Motorsport Chevrolet, will lead the field away on the formation lap. Problems for Aurelian Panis, the Zengo Motorsport car has sprung an oil leak on the grid, not leaving anything trailing underneath it at the moment, but of course it all puddles in the flat floor, so maybe the sharp-eyed team have spotted something. In the green jacket, by the way, that's the team boss, Zoltan Zengo, not averse to getting his sleeves rolled up in any way, shape or form. They're urgently trying to get Panis out. So let's take another look at our starting grid then. Coronel on pole from the Citroen of Banani. Another Chevy Citroen, row two, Esteban Guerreri and Tom Chilton. Banani and Chilton have got to be looking to try and get into the lead. Then Norbert Mikulic and Nesta Girolami, the better of the Honda and Volvo group. Katzberg and Huff ahead of Montero and Björk. Björk will start on pole for the main race. From here on back, this is where they start for both races. From 11th to 16th, nothing will change unless other drivers have penalties and file in behind them. You saw the clunk as Coronel selected first gear and stalls. 
live on board camera as Carnell stalls. Got to get it fired up. If you rejoin before the field is passed away, then passed on, passed you by even, you can retake your position. And of course, those who've gone by Coronel will know that he's coming. He's got to get himself back to the front. You don't have to do it all in one go. So no need to go dive bombing people. But Tom Coronel is on his way. That's why there is a regulation on the warm, on the green flag lap, Martin. When you're warming your tyres, you're only allowed to use 50% of the road just in case that happens. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Tom will find his way back through, but he was... Uh, he was struggling to get off the line. I hope that doesn't affect him when he gets back to the grid for the for the main start. And he uh, stalled it absolutely stone dead. The good thing is that he clearly has plenty of experience in restarting the car. I mean, that's something that a rookie, you know, you have to go through certain sequences on some of these cars, control, all, delete, but, you know, uh, neutral, off, reset, blah, 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 to get the thing to start. Looks like it's going to be a non-starter for early in Panis. It really does. He had a, a pretty torrid time, scored points in the opening race, or a point in the opening race in Marrakesh, and then the car let him down in the second race, the main race. Looks as though he may not get a go in this race either. And it's not a serious oil leak. Hopefully they'll be able to send him out. But you don't want to send out a car with a big puddle of oil in its flat floor because as soon as he accelerates, he's going to distribute it liberally all the way around one of the greatest racetracks on the planet. Built in 1930, in a period of just three months, this 10-kilometer circuit, which is the road course plus the whole of the Mount Oval with which it intersects. 30,000 people built this facility, not in a three-year period or a one-year period, but in three... That would be months. like Italian ants, wouldn't it? Oh, but you can't imagine it now that they threw this up. Threw it, and it's still standing. And they raced on the banking firmly through into almost the 1970s. For anybody who, who wants to come and have a look on the bucket list, the banking still exists there, yeah. doesn't it? So All the, whole, the whole bank circuit yeah. is still here. And, and it's fact, an unbelievable sight. Yeah, yeah. The front straight was the crossover point between the road course and the banking. The banking comes it back in at the exit of the parabolica on the driver's left shoulder. You can see in the long shots up the straight where the banking rejoins. And of course, you come under it as you come down to Ascari. Banking, as we look at it here, or the oval circuit, is over to the right-hand side, past that fence and past the next row of trees. It goes around the outside of the circuit. And you used to, when you're doing the whole 10-kilometer circuit, a lap of the banking, there it is, onto the main straight, cross over, go around the road course, cross over, go around the banking, and so on, and so on, and so on. Different times. They were definitely very different times. Uh, scary times. Yeah. So cars coming to the grid. There's our championship leader, Thiago Montero. Leads by five, six, seven, eight points from Norman Mikulic. Nicky Katzberg in third. Tebuot, the uh, best of the Volvo drivers. In pole position here, another five points added to his tally. So he closes a little on those in front. And we will have to wait and see just what the race brings is Thiago Montero second in qualifying so he had plenty of time so Michigami into the pits yeah Michigami pulls up at the Yas Honda team that's not good news our front two rows are complete our front three rows are complete Volvo row ah now there's a problem Esteban Guerreri reverses back into his grid box Green flag waves at the back of the grid, missing two cars already, both Hondas. Tom Coronel on the right, Mehdi Banani on the left, red lights on, the opening race of Monster's go, and Coronel stalls again as he did on the green flag lap, and right around the outside goes Thiago Montero. Coronel's hopes of defending a lead have evaporated for a second straight time. The car shudders to a halt, it's Banani and Chilton, and, Mont um, and Norbert Mikulic, and down the inside, number 61 is Nesta Girolami, doesn't make contact with the Honda, Esteban Guerreri in fourth, Rob Huff the black car in fifth position, rubs around the outside of what I think must be Nicky Katzberg, and we're on board with Thiago Montero. Let's take a look in the background. Montero's gone by Katzberg as well. Dreadful start by Katzberg. Ted York 
bottled up there behind two Frenchmen, Jan Elache in the larder and John Philippi in the Citroen. But it is a Citroen 1 2, best of the Hondas. Norby up to third and oh, there we go, three wide into the Roger behind. Oh, a horrific start for Coronel. He's just all his nightmares came together. It sent us warning signals on the on the opening lap, so he must have had a clutch problem or something, but just a, a proper wounder for him because there were probably 10 drivers, the first 10, all thinking they had a shot at the winning this race. Yeah, well, Coronel's out of the mix. It's Citroen 1 2. Is he going to be in Bonani or Chilton? Is Norby going to get in there and look at the Volvo in fourth position as well, hounding him? So. Long slipstreaming here. What does Tom Coronel have to say about that start? Okay, I saw most of long run here. How bad? Okay, so it wasn't a technical issue. Tom Coronel, the first to hold his hand up. He's on the back of Yann Lache, who runs out wide from the Variante Ascari. Coronel's got the slipstream run on him. The Frenchman didn't get off the corner well, Matt. He ran out wide, but he didn't have the traction. Chilton having a little look down the inside into the Parabolica. Here comes Lache back down the inside. Can he hold the line? No, Coronel cuts back underneath him. This is going to be... Uh, nine breathless laps. Now because Michelitz is on the attack and he's got the Volvo in his slipstream. They're going to drag past him. No, the Volvo's dropped on the back of Chilton now. Yeah, They're but look. Michelitz out. Yeah, no, no, Michelitz is getting the toe from Banani. He's on the grippier side of the track. Norby is going to try and take both of them. He shuts the door on and Chilton and the Volvo around the outside. That's brave stuff from Nesta Girolami. He knows how to get his sleeves rolled up and race, doesn't he, Nesta? The Argentine is up to third. Chilton back down to fourth. Second onto the straight, fourth at the end of it. Blinding lap from Girolami and uh, Michelitz on the first one. All unscathed as well. And, and right behind, oh, I, I'm not going to make, you know, uh, right behind Nesta Girolami is another Argentine, Esteban Guerreri. There he is. In fact, he's not right behind because, of course, he's got tilt between him. But Guerreri in his Chevrolet is still hanging on there and puncture for Girolami. No, it's not. It's a broken right front wheel or right rear wheel. One of the, one of the TCAs, one of the track control arms is broken in contact over a kerb or something. That could be right front, Martin, on one of yeah. those sausage curves. Yeah. It, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure he was going straight. I'm not sure. Car 68, that's Jan Elache under investigation. Now, we saw somebody pinged for track limits in the European touring car race, swerving past a stalled car. Tom Coronel stalled. Jan Elache may have swerved by him and gone over the white line. Are they really going to do that? Honestly, avoiding a stationary car, especially a man who couldn't avoid a stationary car that stalled in front of him in Marrakesh. Let's hear what Nesta Girolami is reporting to Volvo. Something rolls, something, something. I have been suspension. I have something ro broke in my suspension. Yeah. Is, that a, is that a chink in the Volvo armour? Well, you, there are big sausage curbs on some of these chicanes and they if you get the line wrong, you really clump them hard and Matt, it's like running up a curb on a road. They are that high. Yeah, that setting high. fast to slap of the race there. Here's Norby going around the outside for the lead. The Hungarian brave, but didn't have an overlap. But the writing is on the wall for Banani. The Honda is not slow in the slipstream or slow the slipstream. out of the slipstream. But he's got to be careful because Chilton's sniffing. He's Chilton's Back in the groove now, and he is sniffing at it. One mistake, and Norby might hang himself out to dry. Guerreri still fourth. Rob Huff can't get by him. Norby looking again. He's piling the pressure on Banani. Norby's a cool head on his shoulders. He's trying to fluster Banani by being in the mirror every time. See the ball, though, shaking. Yeah, well, of course, the wheel's flapping around like Bilio. Wait. Not sure whether it was front or rear there. Yeah, Both wheels seem to turn. No, it was, yeah. yeah, you could see the wheel. Ten second penalty added to car 68. Really? Oh, really? Okay, moving on. We're going to have too much depression. It's the it's the rear. It is the rear wheel. It looks too far back to be the front. So he's hit something or made contact with somebody. Possibly Ted Björk. Pulling out behind Thiago Montero, who just at the fastest race lap, did he get by? Ooh. No, 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 he's still there, he's still there! Oh, he's oh great racing! Great racing! I said he's... yesterday, can we come back here next week? 
his car in qualifying has, and free practice has been hooked up all weekend and he's you can tell he's obviously in a hurry for the lead norby to the oh. inside contact they're both off chilton goes through both off norby's got broken steering couldn't turn the car at all the left wheel was not moving norby's steering arm is broken banani drops down the order and into the pits he's going to come norby is out so we have lost panis michigami girolami and now two more that's five cars down already i have to sympathize with norby there he had the inside line banani just turned in on him like he didn't even look to see if he was there yeah you can't no, close the door in the parabolica no, you are. Chilton leads Guerreri in set. Could we have a Chevrolet winner here? Even though Tom Coronel fluffed the start from pole. Esteban Guerreri hanging on in front of Rob Huff. Here's Norby down the inside. Front left puncture, front left puncture. Yeah. Yeah, I got a symp I, I sympathize with Norby on that one. I think it was his corner. Norby's there and at the last moment. You see the Moroccan driver lock up as he realises the danger, but by that stage, did Norby click the kerb on the inside and no, look out wide? Uh, Two was to one. Turning into him. Look at Björk, though, with Thiago Montero. What a race these two are having. Oh. You know, two of the more experienced drivers in the field. That's Debris from on board with Norby. That's, that's a wounder for his weekend. Yeah. This is where the battle is, though, at the moment. It's yeah, everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's Montero B. Bjorg, I think, in fifth and sixth. Well, listen, the biggest gap is from Katzberg to Montero, 1.2 seconds. Any, everywhere else, Any it's one of that top of six second. could win this yeah. at the moment. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. And, and actually, oh, look at Bjorg again. Throws it to the inside. Montero's got the door just closed enough. Bjorg and Montero need to calm down a little because they're being dropped by the group in front, and they could both Hope or either be on the podium. Hope he's got an overlap on Guerrero. Must have speed, and it, well, they're they're both getting a sort of diagonal slipstream off Chilton. Look at Guerrero coming back. Look at the Chevy's top end. Look at the Chevrolet's top end. He's still got an overlap. Huff on the inside is just going to sit there. And oh. behind Guerrero, there's Nicky Katzberg, and there's Thiago, and there's Ted Björk. They are now right with them. One lap calming down between Björk and and, uh, and Thiago, and they're right back there. This is what they've been saying to us. The, the Citroen seems to have more low down mid range. The the RML uh, engined uh, Chevy has more at the top end. Ooh, Katzberg defending now from Montero. Yeah, Montero attacking now. He's got to Katzberg. What epic racing! Fantastic stuff. Tom Chilton still leading. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Then as they go across the uh, strike on the exit of the first. This has all been given Chilton a bit of breathing space just to get his head down, just roll the laps off. But Huff is now anywhere else. Air. Yes, here. No, he's seven tenths in front of Huff. Huff's getting a good strong toe off Chilton in in a lap from here. They will all be in one long queue. Now, he's hit a curb somewhere and slightly loosened the front of the car and it's chattering yeah, away at Katzberg, the front. Katzberg, Katzberg now walking wounded in fourth. The bearded man in the, ge the gentleman there in the, in the garage, by the way, for those that didn't recognise, your four-time world champion, Ivan Muller. Yes, that's what he looks yeah, like. you can see he's... Katzberg split to right on the yeah, floor yeah. there. It's chattering away. Yeah. Yeah, that left front corner. So he's clumped to curb somewhere. There's Montero. Can he get up in the inside? Yeah, here we the go. The Honda's going to get him. The Honda's going to get him. Because he's just making the Volvo a little bit more draggy. Plus, Montero was in the slipstream. Oh, the Honda's just breezed yeah. past, isn't it? Yeah. Well, he had that slingshot, didn't he? And Huff is almost with Chilton. Now, is Katzberg going to let Bjorg go? Yes, he is. Yeah. Or is no. he? No. No. Come on, come on. He's going there. Come on, yeah. come on. If you're yeah. coming, go by. Yes. Tiago's not going to be happy with that. He's going to think he's got one on over Biog, but... Coronel just dive-bombed Philippi into the Primo Variante as well. So Coronel now up to seventh from last-ish. There's Coronel, there's Philippi, there's El Ache. El Ache still with a penalty for... Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Please don't ruin our racing. This is the most epic stuff we've had this weekend.
So Chilton leads from half, but the gap, look at the evolution from seven tenths down to half a second, and it's going to be a car length or two. That's not half a second now. Uh, not now, it's a car length or two, a car length and a bit. Huff is coming. Huff's now got this, the, the dorsal fin is now out of the water, isn't it? Uh, he yeah, he can smell his first one of the year. Yeah. Chilton's going to have to be on the defensive, but... Uh, Never mind five parts per million, he Huff can smell the blood in the water with both nostrils. Yeah, Huffy was the former lap record holder here in the last set of regulations, and he's a double winner here in World Touring Cars, so he... He knows what it takes to win round here. The bearded gentleman in the garage there was Peter Huff. You won't recognise him. He didn't have a goatee in Marrakesh. He does now. Rob Huff in second place. Tom Chilton, the leader. Now, taking the leaf out of the book of the Rickley Motorsport Hondas, what Huff needs to do now is just sit behind Chilton. Not attack. Just sit there, sit there, sit there. The two of them will pull away from the cork in the bottle that is third place, Esteban Guerreri. And then on the last lap, he'll have a go at Chilton and he'll have a chance as good as any other. You've got to hold it out to Guerrero. He's holding on incredibly well, isn't he? He's, yeah. still, on the, he's still got a podium place. I mean, OK, he's being hunted now, definitely. Yeah. However, how come they're not all over him? They're in the toe. They're in the slipstream. Huff's not going to pass him now. I'm, I'm saying that Huff is not going to pass him now. Further back, Coronel goes by Katzberg like he's standing still. Is Katzberg going to give it him? Yeah, no, he's not. No, 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 he's no, not. no. You're going to have to work hard as a Dutchman to get by a fellow Dutchman. Coronel has to jump the curbs. I think he thought that was a done deal. Katzberg, it, it may be that Katzberg didn't have the front oh, has he got a, under break. He's got a problem. Oh, Coronel, has he broken something over those sausages? Katzberg's bonnet's His loose bonnet's as well. I up. thought that from the onboard. I thought that's a big gap under the bonnet. And Thiago goes by them both. I oh, know Thiago goes by Esteban Guerreri, so that's a change for third. Guerreri's coming back at him though. And here comes Ted Björk. Björk trying to get by. Coronel in trouble behind. Where to look? What's Huff doing? Here's Björk behind Guerreri. Guerreri off the podium to fourth, but not done yet. He's a very savvy racer, Esteban. Nicky Katzberg, Jan Erlache, John Philippi, Tom Coronel. So Coronel slipping back. Erlache's got by Philippi as well, but he's still got a penalty Erlache of 10 seconds, so effectively he's still behind. And there's Chilton and Huff. And here comes Ted Björk looking down the inside. Can't get there. Still in fifth. Katzberg ahead of Erlache. Coronel looking as well as they come down to into Ascari. He can't get by through. This is lap seven of nine, two more times to have a stab at all of these passing places. And look at the larder, El Ache driving around the outside. That Volvo splitter is really very, very uh, important in its performance. Oh, Katzberg leaning on him, no, not quite. Around the outside goes El Ache. Coronel's got up the inside, but it's almost like uh, Coronel thought he got a problem or felt something and so backed off just in case and ah did he give the place back because he took it by straight line in the ah, maybe you got a radio See, call well, yeah. no, maybe he just went no i took that you know he's a grown-up driver oh it's going to be three arrests three wide into the prima variante tom coronel john philippi inside nicky katzberg and katzberg just trying to finish in the points and at the moment Although El Ache is in front of him, Katzberg down to ninth on the road will still be eighth. Here comes Huff. Now, is Huff even attacking yet? This is lap eight of nine. I still think he's either going to go in the Parabolica here or on lap nine. Under breaking, Guerrero eased out wide by wow. Ted Björk. And Björk, well, no, no, uh, no advantage, no penalty. Both off there. Last of the late breakers. No, Bjerg was never going to make the corner, was he? No, it? neither of them were at that, at that speed, were they? So this is lap eight, penultimate race here. And it will be the Ultimo Giro when Rob Huff makes his move. They come under the banking, up to Ascari. This is what it would look like if you were sitting in the car looking backwards. Either, either of these win here, Chilton or Huff, it'll be a big win. Yeah, absolutely. And it's amazing how the... Yeah, the almighty Citroen goes from the, the old conqueror to the underdog, which it'll, is perceived as this year. It'll be the first British driver to win here. So, oh, no, Rob Huff since 2011, not 2010. Andy Prio. Yeah. He's hanging on. He's only got yeah. uh, one more lap after the end of this term. Huff's not had a look yet. He's not had a stab. Uh, now, either the he's... the same weight, very evenly matched. Either he's got nothing 
or he's just biding his time. I'd be biding my time. The old Monza adage was, there's only one place not to be going on to the last lap, and that's in the lead. Oh, side by side. Look, here comes the Chevy back again, the top end. And because he's getting that side toe, isn't he? Alongside the Volvo. The Volvo there is marginally ahead. The Chevy with the inside line, getting a bit of slipstreaming. If he can get it nailed, get in in front. He's retaking the place from Ted Buick. Ted Buick, the single fastest car in individual qualifying, whereas the Chevrolet, I mean, in free practice, he was like 12th, 13th, 14th. Okay, last lap of the race. Has Huff kept his powder dry? Can Chilton keep him bottled well, up? Well, Huff, he's got to. If he's going to do it, he's got to do it fast. No, if he does it now, Chilton can get him back into the parabolica. And this is Kevin Gleason and Daniel Nadge. Good move by Kevin Gleason. First time in these cars. And that is a, a good move by the rookie. He's up to 10th, which will be 9th when El Lachey gets his penalty. Both so he'll using, score on his debut. Yeah, both using every inch of track yeah. out of Lesmo too. Cars very evenly matched. Slight technical advantage, possibly with the Sebastian Loeb racing team that ran it last year, compared to Munich Motorsport, for whom the car is new. Well, Can Huffy make it up? Montero's going to be third. Don't know who's going to win. Martin, another couple of laps. Montero will be right in this. There aren't any more laps. This is the last lap of the race. Ultimo Giro. Esteban Guerrero still ahead of Ted Björk. Drift out wide. I mean, one of Huff's problems now is he's running so close, he's, he'll be losing downforce on the front, so yeah. losing front end. Chilton, as long as he keeps his head, he's got this. Guerreri's holding on to fourth. Ted Björk can't go the long way around the outside, can't cut underneath. Guerreri's got the he's door fine. shut. Björk's trying to leave him apart. And at the, at the line, the chequered flag, waiting for Tom Chilton or Rob Huff. I'm going to have to stand up and watch them as they come across the line. It is Chilton victorious. Huff second, takes the well point, done, Montero third. And fourth at the line, Ted Björk got in front of Esteban Guerreri. So, Peter and Kate Huff and Happy Robinson, Tom Chilton, delighted with that. I don't think he expected that, did he? <laughs> no, but, you know, starting second row in the grid in the Citroen with Chevys alongside you and Bernardi in front, you've got to be hopeful of being on the podium. But when he saw Rob Huff towing up behind him, I'm sure he suspected what I suspected, that Huff was just waiting for the last lap to have a go. Chilton couldn't make a break, but he held on to take a frantic win here in the opening race in Monza. It is 7.30 a.m. Eastern in the USA, but I'm not sure it's going to have to be an early start for Graham Chilton. Tom's dad is out with brother Max at the IndyCar race this weekend. Where are they, in Texas? Uh, that's a very good question. And uh, so he's on the other side of the Atlantic as Tom claims his first win of the season. The other Tom... Coronel, well, disappointing for him, but he finishes in sixth position. And do you know what? If you and I had sat down and said, where's Coronel going to finish? Let's assume he's not going to hold everybody off for the win, and, and you've got to assume that in the Chevy. Top six, we'd have said, yeah, pretty much fifth or sixth position, maybe. In the end, he came from the back to finish sixth. So the Chevy, Esteban Guerreri fifth, Tom Chilton sixth, Jan Elache was sixth in the line, but he's got that penalty. Yeah, Coronel was unlucky with his start, and then he then he fought back well from there. But yeah. the, every one of those drivers in the top six, they had a big drive then. Yeah, it was a big they? drive. Chilton, Huff, Montero, Bjorg, Guerreri, you know, they all drove the skin off themselves. So top ten finishers include Kevin Gleason ninth and Daniel Nadge tenth. Jan Elache's 30-second penalty puts him a minute behind the leaders, and that leaves him down in 11th place. Norby failed to finish. Mehdi Benani did come back out and complete, uh, what, how many, four laps? Nesta Girolami didn't finish, Rhea Michigami didn't finish, and Aurelian Panis didn't start. So, you sort of expect carnage uh, in terms of crash damage in Marrakesh. Don't expect mechanical carnage right from the start here in Monza. The stewards will look at the incident between Norbert Mikulic and Mehdi Benani. 
There was a fair few innocent wounded from that one, wasn't there? Yep. It wasn't without being real smash well, fest. There was a... Army didn't see any big, you know, side by side contact. It doesn't have to be big, and there was a lot going on. But all it needs is for you to run wide and whack a sausage curb, and you can break your rear suspension arm without any shadow of a doubt. Michigami, still not uh, not sure what happened to him. And uh, contact with Benani and Michelitz, Norby picking up a punch as well. There's a very happy Tom Chilton. That's not a bad start to your Sunday, is it? It's a great start. Yeah, excellent stuff. So Sebastian Loeb Racing claim a victory. First win of the year for Tom Chilton, first win of the year for Sebastian Loeb Racing, and yep. first win of the year for Citroen. Uh, Sebastian Loeb Racing won their first ever race last time, didn't they? Was that not? No, 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 no. can't have been their first ever race win. No, Benani must have won before last year. Benani's won before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but has he won with SLR? Didn't, what, didn't they have a... yes, yes. No, it was Campos Racing's first win. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Miles away. Uh, so for Tom Chilton, that is career victory number three. Puts him level with the likes of Jörg Muller and Norbert Michelitz in terms Is of that all Norby's won? Only three wins. Can you oh, name That them? was his. I can't. One in a BMW, one in an orange and black Zengo Honda. One in the uh, one in the red and black car. Norby, uh, that that was Norby's race. No, Norby That's hasn't won for three seasons. 2015 was his last win. Well, let's get down to hear from our race winner in the opening race here in Monza. Alex Legui is with Tom Chilton. I am standing next to a very very happy man, Tom Chilton. Congratulations, you win our opening race here in Monza. What a battle that was. It was a serious battle, you know. It, it always seems to me when I'm going for first or second place, it's always Rob Huff behind me, and he's world champion. He's seriously fierce. He's British. He knows how to race, and it was not easy at all. I can't even imagine, as he's because I think a few more laps and he could could have just about got you, but you held him off. Yeah, it was, it was noticeable. One area I was particularly slow was actually in the middle of the first chicane. Um, and he gave me a little bit of a love tap. Hey, Tommy, I'm here. I was going as fast as I possibly could through there. Um, but we just did it. We did it. We got the win. And I am over the moon. Congratulations, Tom. And great. He's done low racing as well. Congratulations to Tom Chilton. Now, uh, Jamie O'Leary of Honda reminds me that Norby led a Honda 123 in Japan last year. According to my all-time stats of the World Touring Car Championship, uh, Norby's wins came in 2012, 2013, and 2015. So Norby has four race wins then, and one in the 2016 uh, column, uh, not in the 2017 where I've just written it down. Well, there is your finishing order and your non-starting order as well. Aurelian Panis, oh dear, that's bad news, didn't start the race at all. But again, breathless stuff. We, you know, we need 30 laps of this. Nine is just not enough. I know they can't go any further, but what a great race. Disappointment from the start from Tom Coronel. Stalled the car on the formation lap. Stalled it at the beginning of the race. But thereafter, it was all action here in Monza. Drivers' Championship still being led by Tiago Montero, who finished in third place from Tom Chilton now and Ted Bjork. How race one has changed the drivers' lineup. Norby, Esteban Guerreri in fourth and fifth position. Rob Huff now up to 25 points ahead of Tom Coronel, ninth and tenth in the standings. Kevin Gleason, two points on his debut. Good stuff from the American driver. There is Tom Chilton looking uh, a little warm. Ow, see, Thiago, ever the gentleman, isn't he? Let's Al 
leg it up the stairs because she's I, got to do the podium introductions. I don't think any, anything was going to stop Alex going <laughs> up the stairs at that speed. Well, at least we didn't have to witness her pulling him out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Now, nah, great win for Chilton. Yeah. That's right, Tom. Yeah, it was good. That fun. is the way you do it. It's the way you do it. Well, you know. But good solid points for Montero. You know, he's looking strong in the championship. And actually, the fastest lap of the race was Bjorg by a good half a second. So, in the balance of performance and weight, which will be a, will start getting redistributed after this round, that's it. I mean, the performance is great for the Volvo, but it's not good for the weight going on the Volvo. It means that the Volvo could actually get more weight than the Honda yep. when the Honda's out in front. Well, you know, I think we're getting to that stage already of thinking, aren't we, where you've just... This is going to be such a varied championship. So many different drivers are going to have a chance to win races here, I think, that you can't be using the old school format of we'll just back ourselves off and not gain weight. Do you remember one year when Gabriele Tarquini tried not to gain any weight and just ended up not scoring any points? I mean, not no points, but way not enough. And that, that was the litmus test, and everybody else went, yeah, okay, that doesn't work. We'll go back to plan A, the Andy Prio format. Take every single point you can, no matter what the cost in terms of, of success ballast. And I think we're there again. You've just got to go out and win races and take as many points as possible. For the manufacturers, it's going to be very tight. There's only the two of them. There's only Volvo and, and Honda, and there's only a cigarette paper between them anywhere. Yeah, the problem is with, with, with the Hondas and the Volvos especially, they're strong lineups. So if you don't go and get the points, your teammate will, and he'll he'll get weight on you. Yeah, it's not like in the UK where you get individual driver weight. Exactly right. Uh, and you know, if you're Thiago there, or if you're Rob, you know, whether you're in a big team or a single car outfit, it's points. Points so make prices. So Jiro who's had a mare of a morning, he's going to get weight because of Bjork's performance. Yeah, and the same with Norby, zero points, but because of the speed of Thiago and the result from Thiago, uh, you know, he's. And in fact, two Hondas score nothing, but Thiago sets a quick lap. So, you know, the team, as a result, that's, that's where the car is. Not misfortune or incident or accident or anything else shaping the balance. It's how, car, how quick a healthy one goes. That's a very good point, Martin, because two Hondas DNFing is not going to help them in the, in the manufacturers at all. No. One's OK, because you only score for two cars. Yeah, Katzberg was walking wounded, but he, he's got to finish. Yeah. So Tom Chilton on the top step of the podium. Has he ever been on the top step of the podium the here in Monza? I'm just trying to think if he was in the independence category. Chilton. Martin, he did very well here in the, didn't he win here in the Zytec? And the winning manufacturer, Dominique Heinz. Which was the world endurance at the point at that time. I think you did. Good question, good question. And now the anthem for Tom Chilton and for Sebastian Loeb Racing. So the French anthem for Citroën, suppliers of the CLEZE, renters, leases, whatever you like, and the uh, British national anthem for our winning driver, Tom Chilton. Second British winner of the weekend here, Lando Norris won the opening race in the Formula 3 European Series this weekend. The young man who looks very much on a path for glory in single-seaters. Chaga Montero has had that path himself, ex Grand Prix driver. Race for the former Jordan team in its uh, 
possibly against Nadir, really, when it was Midland. However, he has that speed and that experience. Rob Huff, as Tom said, when you've got a former world champion up your backside in the same car and he's in your slipstream on the last lap of Monza, you know you're between a rock and a hard place. And you cannot argue with the fact that Tom Chilton managed to cling on and Rob didn't even really get a good move alongside him, despite having uh, three or four laps in the toe right up behind him to have a shot. And presenting the WTCC trophy winner, once again to Tom Chilton, it's Carlo Conti, Chief Administrator of the Automobile Club d'Italia. So the independent winner is also Tom Chilton, Rob Huff second in the independents and third Indy, and not Thiago Montero Tenberg, is Esteban Guerrieri. To Dominique Heinz from Sebastian Loeb Racing is Pablo Renagas, Oscar Oil General Manager for Southern Europe. If you could come together for your official WTCC photograph. So our top three drivers come together. Esteban Guerreri getting points for third in the Indies. Tom Coronel fourth. No point score for our independent trophy second play or joint leader coming out of Marrakesh, Mehdi Banani. So Tom Chilton eases away from last year's champion. Esteban Guerreri also overhauls Banani. Uh, Coronel will do as well and Rob Huff will close up so uh, no Coronel doesn't he ties with Benani now so does Huff so a three-way tie in the Indies Tom Chilton 10 points ahead of that battle and seven ahead of his closest rival Esteban Guerrieri <laughs> 